Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and call the special council meeting for September 20th, 2010 to order. First thing, as always, is roll call and determination of a quorum. Charlene. A new face at the end of the dais. Peterson. Here. Wiefenbach. Here. Davis. Here. Hadcock. Kroger. Here. Costello. Here. Quaker. Here. Waugh. Here. Brown. Here. Masson. Jordan Mason, sorry. Here. Very good. We have a quorum. Just a reminder, if you do have a cell phone or a pager, if you please turn that off or put it in the vibrate mode, we'd certainly appreciate that. Also, just a reminder, this is a special council meeting, which means nothing can be added to tonight's agenda. There's two items on the agenda. The first one is second reading of ordinance number 5661. An ordinance uh, for the annual appropriation for the fiscal year 2011. The second item is discussion on the FTE requests, uh, which is uh, job descriptions and reclassifications for the Airport Civic Center and the Police Department. With that, as always, this is actually the Council's time to actually discuss the Mayor's proposed budget, so I will be turning the meeting over to the Council President, Ron Kroger. Thank you, Mayor. At our last... Uh budget hearing meeting, uh, we had a number of items we wanted to discuss this evening. So um, I believe the appropriate way to do this would be is uh, item number one on the agenda is the second reading ordinance, uh, 5661 ordinance, of the annual appropriation for the year 2011. I think it would be appropriate if we put a motion on the floor to approve second reading. And uh, once we get a second, we can start discussion on the budget. And what we'll be doing is doing amendments to the appropriation. So if we don't uh, finish tonight, uh, we can then have a motion to continue to our next scheduled meeting on the 27th so we'll and take it back up then. So we, we have a motion and a second to approve the second reading uh, on the ordinance for 2011. Discussion on that motion, uh, we're going to go to the items that we... Uh, we're going to discuss tonight. The first one is the 5% across the board cut on all um, all subsidies. Discussion on that item. We'll go to Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there a way that somebody could show us which each uh, which item, each item of those items would be and how much? that would affect. There's no way to, is there a way to put that on the screen, Pauline?
If you if you wanted to know the five percent of what that total would be. We're looking at $62,970.80 for 5%. Do have any other questions, Rod? No, I'm just not. Is that, is that all of them starting from the community theater going down? I actually have the top frozen, so if you... Give me just a second. And then, Mr. President, I did have another question in philosophy here. What's the philosophy of cutting the general fund, 5% in the police and fire? I'm not exactly sure what that percentage was, but not uh, not including any cuts here. I guess that question would be for the mayor. Uh, I would say that basically over the years, um, all these subsidies have basically stayed stagnant. So... Uh, when other departments uh, have had increases in their budgets, uh, these have stayed basically stagnant over the years. I have no more questions at the moment. Okay. Further comments, uh, Bill Waugh. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to be on record as being against a 5% across the board cut of the uh, subsidy fund. Like you said just a few seconds ago, over the last few years, as we have increased uh, the general fund budget, we have basically left the subsidies the same for all of these different entities. And when I look at Rapid City, I look at Rapid City as a great big pie. And to make that pie complete, you have to have these different entities supporting Rapid City and doing some of the things that government can't do for the citizens of Rapid City. And so, if this is put in as an amendment to the budget, I would be voting against the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Further uh, discussion regarding uh, the 5% across the board cuts for the subsidies? We'll go to Bonnie Peters. Thank you. I agree with Alderman uh, Waugh that that would be 5% would be excessive. And um, I st would also like um, the councilman to identify um, the amount of cuts that they would like to have. And I don't think we should take money out of the people that are the most neediest. I think we, if we're going to cut, we need to do it somewhere else. Thank you. Further comments will go to Dave Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. I agree with Councilman Waugh as far as supporting these subsidies the way they're currently proposed. But I'd also want to draw everyone's attention to this list. And I'm glad that Councilman Weifenbach asked to put it up. Because as we look across at 2006 and 7 and 8, I think it's pretty evident to all of us that there's several different programs along the way that in 2010 and it proposed in 2011 that are not on the budget. So when we start adding those numbers up, we have in fact cut subsidies to different programs. Obviously, somewhere along the line, those have been vetted out. And I think it's, it's important that we look at the ones that are left behind and the importance that uh, are, are felt to the community and that we leave those alone. So I, I'm very much in support of leaving them as, as, as they are and, um, and such. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we'll go to Mayor Hanks. Thank you, Mr. President. Just want to point out, and, and uh, Alderman Davis is correct, there's a number of, of subsidies that uh, have sort of dropped off, but I do also want to make sure because I don't want there to be any confusion. If you actually look at line 39 and 40, those are $100,000 each. And the reasons you see a lot of zeros up there right now as far as everything from the Middle Luzon Center, the, the Kenyon Lake, Salvation Army, and so forth, we actually, once we get into that fiscal year, the committees uh, for 100000 which is, is going to be uh, the 
really the human needs uh, side of things. We have a subsidy committee, and they will divide that $100,000 out. And then uh, basically the arts community uh, will actually determine where that other $100,000 is, is actually allocated out. So I know Dave knows what I'm talking about, but I don't want anybody in the audience uh, to uh, be under the impression that because there's a zero in some of these line items uh, that they're not going to get funding. That's not exactly the way it works. Best thing to do is look at the 2009, and that gives you a good indication of what each one of these subsidies were receiving uh, individually. Thank you, Mayor. We'll go to Gary Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, most of the thunder has already been taken and spoken. I, too, will be in the camp of voting no on this. Uh, the amount of money that $63,000 is not going to affect us as much as the 5% will affect some of these out here. If we're going to be start doing things with subsidies, I'd like to see us start gearing towards next year, start earlier, get the word out, what we're looking at, and have some discussions then, not at the last minute on this. So I will also be a Novo. Thank you, Gary. We'll go to Sam Quaker. Thank you. I think um, before I proceed much further, I think I would like to address very briefly the the, the topic of last you know last minute uh, amendments. Uh, I think it's it's uh, very important to note that there was a uh, a budget hearing scheduled for August 23. And uh, and the mayor and I think some others were not able to make that. And then it was moved to the 30th, or going to be, and some people couldn't make that. And then there was a Labor Day weekend, so then it had to be moved to the 13th. So I think uh, criticism leveled at those uh, who brought forward amendments um, uh, should not be leveled at them um, for bringing it forward on the 13th because those discussions were going to be had on the uh, on the uh, the 23rd. So I realize these are sensitive discussions, but I think when uh, when people uh, short circuit the debate by simply saying that it was too late to the table, I think that uh, that amounts to an ad hominem argument, and that really isn't isn't fair to those that uh, uh, have have the willingness to bring forward ideas uh, for how we can improve our budget. From a philosophical standpoint. Government is responsible for providing non-appropriable services, services that no one else can provide. If, if the city of Rapid City and the taxpayers do not fund fire and police, there really isn't anywhere else to, to fund them. There's no other funding available, with the exception of maybe some federal funding that's, for the most part, uh, matching grants. So the reason I brought forward uh, the 5% idea was twofold. Uh, number one, it was somewhat of a counter to the, uh, uh, the uh, journey item, I, I felt that um, if we were going to go down that road that we needed to look at all of the, um, the subsidy funds. Uh, number two, fire and police were going to be taking uh, a, a significant cut uh, or a cut at all, then we needed to be looking at uh, the, uh, the funds for, um, for uh, subsidies as well. With that being said, I can count votes. I've gotten pretty good at that uh, my years on the council, and I can sense that there is not the willpower to, uh, to uh, do an uh, across-the-board cut, and I understand why. It's difficult. It's difficult to, to look at people who, who, uh, uh, are, whose own donor bases are also struggling, uh, who aren't receiving the donations that they used to, well, we aren't receiving the funds that we used to either in terms of the, of the city. So if anything, I think this discussion will serve to um, hopefully advance the notion that we need to have uh, another budget meeting in November. We need to start these discussions earlier. And, and uh, if there isn't anything on the agenda in November, I'm going to put an item on the agenda asking for a recap of where we're at with sales tax because of our yeah, and, and take another look at the 2011 budget because if our sales tax continues to, to, to fall, we were at negative 3.22 for 09. Um, we're, we have come up a little bit from that uh, uh, significantly. In fact, we're hopefully we're sitting at about negative two right now and hopefully it will be better towards the end of the year. But if sales tax doesn't come back, um, a no growth budget meaning uh, not increasing your expenditures from one year over the next, 
that doesn't help you much when you're in, in a period of negative growth. And so um, I realize that $63,000 out of $163 million uh, isn't, uh, isn't seen as a lot. Um, uh, and uh, from a percentage basis, it isn't. But we're going to have to look at all of these items if the, if this, if, if the budget uh, continues to be as, um, as tight as it is. So those are my comments at this time. I mean, one of the other options we could do is, uh, is delay uh, payments until after, you know, until sometime next year when we know, um, when we know if our sales tax is coming back or not. But, you know, that's a discussion we can always have in, uh, in November as well. I think what I got out of the discussions the other night, and I hope all of you did too, is, is, that, when we, is that when this budget is passed, it is not done. Uh, and and uh, because if it's done and we're told, well, you can't go back into this and change anything, then, then we need to open this all, all up now and, and plan for uh, worst case scenarios and what are being planned uh, uh, for now. So, um, so those, are, uh, those are my comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I guess just for clarification, Mayor, I see you want to speak again, but would you address Sam's um, basically question about addressing the budget at any time during the year? Sure. Yeah. There again, the City Council certainly has the authority to actually look at supplemental appropriations any time during the year, quite honestly. We do it uh, typically three or four times a year anyway. And keep in mind, a lot of times people think of supplemental means that you're going to add to the budget. That's not necessarily true. A supplemental can also be a reduction in a line item within the budget. So the council, once it's formally adopted, certainly has the ability to, to go back, make adjustments based upon the revenue. And Mr. President, if I can, I just want to make sure there's a point of clarification. Alderman Quaker was exactly right. Uh, in 2009, our sales tax were down about 3.2%. But in 2010, <coughs> we're actually on the positive side for the year. I just want to make sure I clarify that. I understand where Alderman Quaker was going looking back historically, but for the year in 2010, we are actually up 1.3 percent. I think where Alderman Quaker was going was the fact that if you take uh, the 1.3 and subtract the 3.2, we're down a couple points. That is fair. But our sales tax is growing in 2010. Uh, we're, we're crossing our fingers, hoping for the best, and that it seems to be trending in the right direction. Thank you, Mayor. We'll go uh, to Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't see anyone from the city attorney's office here today. I wanted to clarify this whole concept of this time frame on these budgets to make sure that we're clear on, on what's taking place here. So. He just walked in. Would you uh, make your comment again? Thank please? you, Mr. President. Uh, my question is, is uh, uh, there's been concerns about the time frames of the budget, and the budget's basically broken down into a couple pieces, if um, I understand correctly. And part of it is to uh, obviously to get the county to approve whatever mill levy the city puts forward and maybe you can expand upon these types of things because it's continually been said of these time frames and everything like that. I've been here for three years so I've worked on the budget for an entire year previously but when you add four new council people in the middle of July yeah it's going to seem like a time crunch to those people but uh, it's not really a time crunch so I guess if I could just get an explanation from our city attorney specifically what the state statute tells the city that they have to do in moving forward with uh, presenting a mill levy to the county and presenting uh, enterprise funds budgets, timeliness of those, and the timeliness of anything other than the general or the um, enterprise fund budget items. We'll go to our city attorney, Jason Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Reading the provisions of Title IX and, and Title uh, 10 together, it's clear that the council is obligated to take up first reading of the budget ordinance not later than the first meeting in September. In order to um, get the, the uh, revenue needs of the city for property tax to the county, that's got to be done by the end of September. There is some flexibility with regard to the enterprise funds. Those can be uh, put off until the end of December. Historically, the council has done it all at once. Thank any, you. That was, any other questions, Ron? That was one of the clarifications I wanted to make, and I think the mayor made a clarification earlier that says if we decide somewhere along the line or if, if, the, if uh, fiscal restraints cause us to make changes, that we can do that. And I think he, he uh, explained that. So 
I just want to make sure we get this all this information clear and then that we're not I mean telling people that they have to make quick decisions based upon the timelines we got plenty of time to, to pass this and I don't think that that's not going to happen uh, but I think that when we just when we uh, stifle debates then then that becomes problematic and I think one of the questions tonight is I never heard a motion made on this item so I don't know where we get where we're supporting or deep or not supporting anything here I think if we got to keep in mind that we're, we're having a debate we're talking about ideas that people bring up and then the more the more we do, uh, approach that in a defensive posture the more people will be or the less apt people will be to come here with ideas of ways of being more cost efficient for our taxpayers so uh, unless someone made a, a motion, I didn't hear one. So uh, maybe we, you could clar clarify that, Mr. President. Actually, I think the procedure here will be is, is we do have uh, motions for a second reading for approval of the budget. Um, the way I would presume this would happen is we'd go down the item, every one of these items here, and if there's a wish uh, of the council or the committee here to uh, look at doing those, then they would need to put an amendment on the floor to do like in this particular case, 5% cut across the board. Uh, if we don't have a motion, I just figure that item's dead. I appreciate that. I wanted to clarify that because I heard people were for or against this item and without a discussion, I want to make sure we, I, I come here to gather the information that the council has on their mind. So it, it's important for me to hear the debate and, and uh, whether someone's for or against it. I think that in this case, uh, there's opportunities here. I think that, uh, you know, if you if you cut across the board, I think maybe you have an injustice. But moving forward, the council has to take a look at these items and uh, bring bring things forward to say whether these are, these really make sense anymore. Uh, whether there's other opportunities to fund these items, or maybe the city just doesn't want to fund some of these items continually. I think that argument can be can be made. Uh, especially if we're sacrificing in other arenas of the police department, the fire department, um, the arena of public infrastructure, those types of things. I mean, when push comes to shove, then that philosophy has to take, take precedent and uh, these things have to be looked at. Uh, I'm not necessarily uh, interested in a 5% cut across the board. I don't know if that would be the justice here, um, but I think that in, in it's it's a good idea to look at these items and see if they make sense and they continue to make sense going into the future. So, unless uh, I'm I'm here to listen to what everyone has to say. So, all right, uh, thank you. We'll go to Jordan Mason. Thank you, Mr. Kruger. Um, I just want to state that I also am going to be against a five percent across the board cut for uh, a few specific reasons. First and foremost. Uh, that doesn't necessarily um, get the most out of what we're looking to do here, which is save money for the taxpayers. And uh, $62,000 is not necessarily uh, equitable for the action being taken. Uh, and also, secondly, um, because the cuts can't be determined on an equitable basis by determination of needs and uh, demand of certain services throughout the city, I don't think that we can do this in a fair and equitable manner by a broad sweeping stroke of the brush here. And uh, I just wanted to explain why specifically I'm against going across the board in this manner. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Um, I see we have no other lights, so um, if it's a wish of a council member to uh, have an amendment put on the table, I'd entertain that right now. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next item. Okay, there's no uh, amendment on the floor, so we'll move to the next item, which is the journey and uh, removal of $200,000 from their budget. Discussion on that item. We'll go to Jordan Mason. Thank you. Um, I realize this has been a very controversial item from its inception and currently today. Um, one of the things that I just want to bring up is that uh, a little background on where the journey was in 2000. Uh, from a legal and finance meeting, the Journey Museum Task Force was uh, gathered on April 19th of 2000 to make recommendations to legal finance and the city council, and they came back with a determination to uh, um, 
that in the best interest of the citizens in the city to pay these costs for a five-year period would give a new board enough time to better establish the journey and build the necessary endowment to help it survive long term. I just want to recap that that was back in the year of 2000. We are currently in the year 2010. Um, the reason that I brought this forward is not necessarily that I am absolutely stuck on the $200,000 mark, but it was determined at a point that we would decrease the subsidy over a period of time. And that was clearly stated back in 2000. I guess I'm really posing the question before the council that we make or at least open the discussion on whether this is going to be a long-term subsidization at $325,000 or if we are going to start incrementally decreasing that subsidy over a period of time as this stated so that they have the necessary time to build their endowment. Um, and that's really what I'm pointing at with this um, motion that I brought forward on the first budget hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, further comments regarding the journey budget? Uh, Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'll make this comment in reference to all, all of the subsidies that are outside of the police, fire, and infrastructure and, and things like that. And as I mentioned and alluded to earlier, that the council needs to adopt a philosophical approach to uh, whether these are become handouts or they become hand ups in all cases. Not clearly identifying one from the other, but identifying them all as a whole. If this is a person's business, uh, and you're spending your money on it, is it, would it be an appropriate maneuver for you to continue to fund s some certain items that are, that are we call, in our world, we call subsidies? Uh, when, when, when taxpayers' dollars gets hurt, I mean, we, we can sit up here and, and the reality of it is, is that um, as we grow government, whatever shape or form it is, whether it's in the shape of subsidies or whether it's in the shape of uh, adding FTEs or, or doing that, and then you make that growth period during the growth period of, of an economy, is such as any, any business, your, your company grows and at some point it plateaus and that, then the next point it decreases. And when that decrease comes, there's got to be political willpower and the ability of financial and fiscal responsibility to make those tough decisions. I'm not saying we're at that point, but it's, it's at that teetering point and we've had this conversation. Um, that we need to look at these items, but at the same token, we need at some time to have these conversations up front with people and be realistic about where they may be going and what subsidies may survive and what may not survive in those tough times. But as, they, as I've been on the council in three years, I've seen the grant programs grow. And when, once the grant dissipates, the program doesn't go away. But the funding has to come from somewhere. And the funding comes from all of us in here, the taxpayers and the citizens of the city. So, you ha I mean, it's a tough decision. Yeah, it is, and absolutely. Maybe there's an opportunity to synergize some of these, of these uh, uh, subsidies or what we call, uh, we have several people doing the same thing where if we could synergize them and put them under one roof, they could be, they could uh, have the ability to save themselves money and then at that time wean themselves from a, the, the city subsidy program and that money could be spent on roads or infrastructure or the fire department and the police department, which are, under huge personnel constraints right now and looking at, I think those guys were going to get 0.075% raise or, or something in, in, that, in that regard. And that, and that is not, they didn't grow like the rest of the government grew. They didn't grow like that. So I think that looking at some of those tough constraints, we have to be realistic about it. And we need to have to have those tough, consider those tough talks at some point. So I don't think that this conversation is that far out of line. It's unfortunate that it may have taken place in, in the realm that it did, but I think it's realistic to start looking at those. So if we sit up here and, and, and think that we're not going to be realistic about this, then we need to consider whether we're doing our job or not. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. We'll go to Jordan Mason. Thank you, Mr. Kroger. I, I just actually wanted to comment on uh, Alderman uh, Weifenbach's uh, comments. And I think he brings up a very valid point on the philosophical out, out, aspect of this is that um, we really have two different options here as our economy uh, fluctuates fairly dramatically. Um, recently there's been some interesting newspaper articles and I'll just uh, preface this with this that first off the governor of our state is asking for a 10 percent cut across the board. There was another newspaper article recently over the weekend that talked about a, an increase in the poverty level in this state. 
In economic times like this, I think we have some options. We have the ability to look at prioritizing to live within our means, or we can keep growing our budget, possibly disproportionately to the growth of the economic area. And I think that's one of the important factors that we should keep in mind in these discussions is how are we going to approach this not only today but in the long term. And I just want to add that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Bonnie Peters. Thank you. Just wanted to um, just where life is just not simple because the police, the fire, uh, lots of departments have taken cuts. But we also know that when you social services that are delivered to children and uh, the youth and uh, poor people also will reduce the, the police um, the budget that's needed. Because if you invest in children, then you don't have to turn around and invest as much money in police and things like that. So it's not simply as easy as just saying, well, you know, we need to focus on just a few uh, departments. And then also to cut subsidies at a time when, like Alderman Mason said, that the poverty um, numbers are climbing, that those, you know, it could be uh, penny wise and pound foolish. And I agree with Alderman Weifenbach about hopefully these subs, uh, agencies will, can um, get together and look and see what duplications they are um, having where they could get together and uh, work more closely and get the synergy so they get more bang for their buck out of that also. Thank you. Mayor, did you have a comment? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, there's been some discussion, I think, uh, very wisely about which, what is the philosophy here at City Hall. Well, I'll tell you very flatly, the philosophy I've had in preparing the budgets for the last couple of years is we will live within our means. That's why we've had a flat budget for the last three years. As a matter of fact, in 2011, the proposed budget is actually reduced by 5%. And so, and, and let me just share a story with you. I had a reporter this afternoon ask me, why doesn't the city ask for a 10% across the board cut like the governor did. And you know what my response is? We don't have to because city government has not grown for the last three years where state government has been allowed to grow at three to 4%. If you actually look at our general fund budget, 2009, it was $50 million. 2010, it was $50 million. In 2011, it's proposed at $47.5 million. The reason that, we do, that we're not in the financial constraints in literally peril that the state is is because with the council's help, we have been ultra conservative, and we have taken the philosophy that we're not going to spend more money than we take in. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Uh, since we don't have any other lights, uh, is there a wish to put a motion on the floor during, regarding the journey? If not, we'll go to Jordan Mason. I would actually uh, like to offer a motion after reviewing the figures and some of the information that has come forward. I would like to actually revise the current motion of reducing it by $200,000 and actually a, um, open a discussion actually of reducing this um, by 5% until we reduce it by $100,000 over a period of five years to actually reestablish the original proposal that was proposed in 2000. And I would like to uh, just make a substitute motion instead. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second on that motion? Do we have a second? Okay, the motion dies for lack of a second. Uh, is there a motion to put on the floor for the journey? If not, we'll move on to the next item. Go to Ron Weifenbach. I see you have your light on, Ron. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to comment on that and think that it would be uh, if we were moving forward looking at the entire subsidies across the board and wanted to sit down and have some conversations with these, with uh, the people that are receiving these subsidies and looking at opportunities, like I would mentioned earlier, to synergize them and find ways that we can uh, get out of funding some of these things for the future, I would be willing to do that. Um, I am not sure that today it would be appropriate just to um, cut their budget and maybe and to a point where they would maybe uh, eliminate some of the services they're getting. But I, I would think moving forward I'd be interested in, 
in, in finding a position that would eliminate some of these subsidies and whether it took a, a, a council task force or whatever the case may be, I think it needs to look at it, need to be looked at it as a whole to find a way around that. So that, that's why I didn't support any motions. Thank you, Ron. We'll go to Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think that uh, this discussion will be a worthy discussion to have in uh, in November and discuss uh, just the uh, the journey at that time and get an update at that time when we don't have um, uh, other items on the agenda uh, and find out the status of the endowment, um, find out the the game the game plan uh, uh, going forward, uh, and and kind of calculate it out 5% per year, that would be, uh, you know, that would, apparently that would have, that would have to be st stepped up because uh, I'm not, I wasn't quite sure of the math there. But anyway, I think, I think that that, uh, Jordan, is a good discussion to, to have and I think, uh, I think you showed uh, courage by wanting to have this discussion and I think that the, uh, certainly what should come out of it is, is that the, the journey needs to represent their plan uh, for their endowment and their plan for becoming as self-sufficient uh, as possible. And Mr. Mason is, is correct that the, the public record uh, does uh, uh, clearly state that the ongoing subsidy was going to, was going to be reduced. It hasn't been uh, reduced. and. Um, I, I do think that that uh, discussion of the journey's uh, future and the plans for their building their endowment needs to be discussed uh, at a later time. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. We're going to move on to uh, the next item, which is uh, purchase equipment uh, for the streets department light item 4360. Discussion on uh, that item. Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the discussion on this item would be that uh, we find a way to fund the purchase of this equipment as it is an ongoing expense each year. And, and what we've proposed, uh, is my number still up on this piece of paper here? I don't know. I didn't doodle it, so it's probably readable. But. Right. Okay. In 2007, we purchased a million one worth of equipment. In 2008, 478,000. In 2009, we purchased 645,000 uh, dollars. It, it's very evident to me that in 2012, there will be purchases anywhere from half a million dollars to a million dollars that is scheduled to happen. In, in this particular line item. Uh, by removing this item for 800,000, is, is there any way we can put that up there? Because I think that, doesn't that also have the, uh, the budget numbers on there from year to year, actual budget numbers versus budget to budget numbers? I think most people relate to numbers that are real, numbers that they, the actual numbers they really spent. You can, typically you can budget whatever you want, but what you really spend and what your real expenses are is important, so. Uh, this particular item, number 4360, deals with the purchase of equipment in our uh, public works department. And uh, to cut 600 and I think the 800 versus 180 is like $620,000 from the budget. Uh, basically, if we started out with $800,000 worth of purchases, and the numbers I'm using are the numbers I was given. So, Excuse me, Ron. Tracy, I think Marsha went to get you some tape. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You can hold it. I don't expect in, right? you to hold okay. it. I mean, that, anyway. So if we have $800,000 worth of purchases, and what we've done is instead of making those purchases this year, uh, to simply cut the budget, what we've done is we've basically have went out and we're going to borrow that money. So we're going to borrow the $800,000 this year, which means we'll have uh, principal, principal and interest payment of roughly, I believe that number was $180,000. So in the lieu of, of just saying we cut our budget, we, we, what we did is we eliminated $620,000 of purchases today 
for payment on Tuesday. Basically is what we've done. We didn't really eliminate anything or cut anything. What we've done is pushed it out into the future budgets because those, those payments will, I believe it's amortized over a period of five years. For so the next five years, we'll be making, on purchase, making payments on purchases that we made in 2010 or in 2011, excuse me. So when 2012 comes along, we're going to have another decision to make. Do we push the, the, the golf ball down the garden hose a little farther, or do we purchase that equipment again at that time? But we still remember, we still have those payments from the previous year. So what we've done is, is, is uh, I call it the proverbial golf ball coming down the garden hose. Eventually, at some point, you're going to have to pay that off. So it really doesn't, it's not a true savings. What it is is, uh, just a changing of the time period or the time frame you're purchasing the item. So I would, I would make the motion that we uh, purchase those items as typically, to, because the, I believe the interest on those items for the first year is close to $40,000, if I'm not mistaken. So what we've actually added, we've added $40,000 in expenses to the bottom line for the first year. And then for every, there, every year after, however that number amortizes out, you'll have interest payments that will be coming due at the period of the, at the, during those uh, five years. So I, I'm saying that we add this item back into the budget. And uh, I would make the motion to uh, add these purchases back into the budget. Do we have a second on that motion? Jordan Mason, a uh, second on that motion. Pauline, what is, do you know what that number is that we're looking at here? The change would be the in public works the equipment purchases would be brought back up to eight hundred and four thousand dollars. We would reduce the principal, I believe it was about one hundred and forty one thousand dollars and the interest or actually the principal was one hundred and forty thousand dollars and the interest was forty one thousand two hundred and fifty, I believe. Okay, so basically it's add uh, eight hundred and four thousand dollars to this year's budget. No? About six hundred. It'd be, it'd be a net difference because we would take away the lease payment then. Okay. Would you give us that number here while we have more discussion? Ron, do you have any other comments on your motion? That'd be my motion. I'll just listen to what anybody else had to say. Okay. Further discussion, Mayor Hanks. Thank you, um, Alderman Weifenbach. Actually, uh, presented it. Uh, pretty much correctly in the fact that this year we're actually looking at, if need be, uh, purchasing equipment through a capital lease versus a cash payment. We already do that with garbage trucks. We already do that with ambulances and fire trucks. This year, I, I, I'm very candid in saying this is probably the toughest year to uh, bring forward a balanced budget in Rathsley's history because of the fact that we took the biggest hit in our sales tax in our history. The one thing to keep in mind, if indeed you do pass this motion, you no longer have a balanced budget. You're six hundred thousand dollars short uh, because of the cash flow. So you would need to go back and find an additional six hundred thousand dollars worth of cuts somewhere within this budget. If indeed you take the philosophy of going back and paying cash versus doing the capital lease. Now, having said that, keep in mind I have always said people before purchases. And the other thing that I've always said is we will scrutinize every single uh, purchase of equipment. And this is, this is no exception. If indeed we need a pers uh, piece of equipment, that's fine. We'll go out and we'll look at doing a capital lease. My goal is, is if we can get by for another year or two using that same equipment and save that money for a year or two to give, get us over that hump, I think that's exactly what we should be doing. That is the fiscally conservative thing to do. Wait on any purchases until you absolutely need to have them. Um, there again, $600,000 seems like a lot of money. I'll tell you what it is. It's three dump trucks. It's three plow trucks. It's one road grader. That's what it is. It's, it's one compactor for the landfill. And so there again, if indeed we need to take a look at, at doing a capital purchase, a uh, capital lease, it will all come back to the council anyway because they're the ones that are going to have to approve it uh, to go out to bid, and they're the ones that are going to have to approve it. So um, I just want you to realize if you do pass this motion, your, balance, your, your budget will be out of balance by about $600,000, and you will need to find additional cuts to the budget. Thank you, Mayor. We'll go uh, to Pauline Sumption. Thank you, Mr. President. The difference would be $622,500, which is what would be added back in. 
622-500? Yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Further comments, uh, Sam Quaker. Thank you. Uh, I guess uh, what concerns me is is not having the, uh, the having the numbers in front of us to, in spite of the discussion we had on this a few weeks ago, not having the uh, the numbers in in front of us tonight to know what it really means uh, to uh, to do this. I mean, how uh, how expensive is this for the the city? Uh, you know, five, seven, nine years uh, down the line. And I remember uh, discussions seven, eight years ago on the controversy over total cost uh, bids and lease uh, lease purchases. And um, I, I'm not sure when the the city started the practice of 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 lease lease purchases again of of garbage fire and. Uh, fire trucks and ambulances. Do we know when that started again? Was it within the last year? Pauline? I will have to apologize. I don't even know when it ended because when I got here, we had capital leases already on the books. Okay. So I wouldn't know that. I'm sorry. I, I think what we need is, is when we, when we uh, vote to accept bids on a Monday night, we need to know whether that's going to be... Um, uh, lease purchase when you know what the interest rate is when you know what the terms are um, Because otherwise it looks like we're just accepting a, a Bid for an outright purchase is that possible for us to do so we can at least have visibility? <clears throat> excuse me visibility of the of the lease purchases that are being made Holy. I believe when we awarded the bid on the fire trucks I did point out that we had a lease for that and so I try to point that out as they come forward No, oh, but I mean the terms I mean is it is it 10 years at 4% interest rate? What's the amortized, what's the amortized cost? I mean, we, we need to know up front what costs we're getting ourselves into when we make those kind of uh, purchases so that we don't end up in a, um, in a situation, um, you know, like this. I mean, I'm getting the sense that we're, in a way, kicking the can down the road. Now, we might not have a choice, and it might be the wise thing to do because of the fact that interest rates are so low right now. Well then, spell it out for us. Tell us why that. it's a good deal. We we don't have that here. We just have we're going we're going to be able to um, save six hundred twenty two thousand five hundred dollars this year by doing this. So what does that mean for us seven nine years down down the line? And we had three or four council members. You guys expressed concerns about this at the last meeting, and and if I'm wrong, then I will uh, eat my words on this. But it seems that we don't have the information tonight to know what that's really costing us down the line. And that concerns me. And I'm not prepared to vote on this amendment tonight. I think that this amendment is an amendment that needs to be discussed, but I would like it to hold off until next Monday uh, and uh, to give uh, staff, the, uh, the administration, a chance to pull together those numbers on what the cost would be down the line. So um, with I, I think that this would be in order, but I'd like to offer a motion to um, continue this. Can we continue this amendment? To the 27th? Yes. We, sir, we can't do, what, what can we do, Jason? It would be to vote the motion down and then take make another motion to uh, take this to the budget hearings on the 27th? I think that if a continuation motion here would be directed towards the ordinance itself. So I think there's a couple of options. You could vote on the amendment tonight the the offerer of the amendment could withdraw it and reserve the right to bring it back on Monday or um, I guess that's probably it you either vote on it tonight or you withdraw it would the motion maker be interested in withdrawing his motion to get more information for next Monday night Mr. Weifenbach as long as we could as long as we could do that Monday I mean if, it, if we get to the point where you know, I have no problem with that. Voting on Monday night to be able to give you guys the rest of the information that's necessary. We're certainly not going to get through the agenda we have tonight, so I mean, we can certainly uh, put that I'll back be, on for next Monday night. Sure, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. So we'll look Mayor Hayne, I just I'll keep it very short. It's real simple. Uh, if you amortize it out over five years, which we typically do, uh, and there again, assume a four percent, which we just got on our fire trucks. The total cost over the five years is 103 or 903,000. That's rough. So the the cost to actually 
do a capital lease is about one hundred to one hundred and two thousand dollars over the five years. Now keep in mind that's making an assumption that we buy all the equipment. Let's go back to the discussion. I said that we will take each and every request for equipment up individually, and there has to be a demonstrated need to buy that additional equipment. So worst case scenario, if we if we spend all eight hundred and four thousand dollars, if you amortize it over five years, four percent, my little. HP 12C says it's about $904,000. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Quaker, would you like to put that motion on the floor to uh, continue this item to uh, the 20th meeting on the 27th? Yeah, I would, uh, I would move to continue. Uh, Alderman Weifenbach can simply bring it up again next week. I mean, I think we know that. Or next week, uh, or on the 27th. Is that next week? Okay, yeah, next week. Okay. So... The motion's been withdrawn, so I don't, I can't continue something that's been withdrawn. So I think that's very true. So we'll just uh, move, we'll just move this item to uh, the 27th, and we don't really need a motion to do that, I guess. Yeah, Tracy, could you flip your sheet there so we can see what the next item on the agenda is? Okay, uh, next item would be moratorium on filling uh, vacancies with the city. Discussion on that item. Mr. Rambach. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the position I'm taking on this is to uh, enact a moratorium on non-vital non uh, positions, not including the fire department, not including the police department, um, in reference to uh, new hires, to give my, number one, give my, the new colleagues an opportunity to, to look at these positions, and it gives our administration the opportunity to look at these positions, and in the interim gives them time to save a little money to see how essential some of these positions are. I'll take the same position that I took before, that the government has grown in the period of growth, and now that we're opportunity for it to come down, I think it's an opportunity to uh, look at some attrition without the ability to have to just lay somebody off or something. So um, we can amend the motion however you want. I just don't think it's pertinent that we have to fill those positions right away. I think if we allow them to um, be analyze a little bit and look at the opportunities that come from maybe moving people around. We've done a, uh, a second floor review in uh, growth management and public works. There's been some uh, uh, third party decisions or I should say recommendations made that we haven't acted upon all of those yet, particularly in the area of uh, either eliminating positions or shifting positions around or synergizing off of those positions. Uh, I just think it's uh, it's uh, it's an opportune time. And one thing I've also noticed as we go through these budget hearings is that it's it seems that we, oh that's sixty thousand, oh that's only a hundred thousand, or well, let's let's take the option of a hundred thousand dollars. If anybody in this room could walk out of their out of their house each morning and pick up eight thousand dollars off the front of their step just by bending over and picking it up, would you do it? That's the question I, I got to ask myself because it's it's sixty thousand here, it's five thousand here, it's a hundred bucks here, it's ten thousand here. Well, if we add them all up, we're in the millions, guys. I just think we got to take a more of a, a, a more of a fiscally responsible attitude towards this. Uh, by not buying something is not a cut in in, a, in anybody's budget by any means. I, I, and it, maybe it's not necessary, but it, it is. It does cost more money to finance things, and it does cost more money just to continually hire people. If the economy's not growing and the demand's not there, why would we continue to hire these people and put them in these positions? I'm not advocating for laying anyone off. I'm just saying let's look at those positions as they come due. Let's, let's get some real good evidence that they still do need to be required. I don't think it's necessary that we have a, a third party come in and do it. I think we can challenge our administration to do it. We have a lot of good people in our administration. Uh, there was been some uh, uh, earlier, there was some, some suggestions on cutting particular uh, higher level management positions. And I think that, that that was taken as a negative and that should be taken as a positive. As a manager or an owner of a business, the one thing you want to have is people underneath you who can do the job when you're gone. And sometimes that may be eliminating your position entirely. So I just I want to make sure that everybody understands that, and it, it, I'm not advocating for laying anybody off. I just say let's analyze these positions. If there's opportunity to save money, 
you can't, I mean, you, we can kick the can down the road with not buying particular pieces of equipment or tools that people need to do their job. But if we particularly don't need those positions or those positions can be moved into other positions, then I think that that would be appropriate for us to do. And that's why I'm advocating I'm going to make the motion, I'll make a motion to uh, put a moratorium on new hires other than the police department and the fire department. Um, and we can and we can amend it however we want, but at least it gives us a place to start. And we can look at those positions and say, do we really need those positions to be filled? Is there opportunities there to save the taxpayers money? Is there opportunities for us to come outside our front door and grab that five thousand, eight thousand, maybe it's a hundred thousand dollar bill each each month at the beginning of the month? Thank you. Okay, you, you, we do have a motion on the floor. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Okay, we have a motion and a second to put a moratorium on all uh, uh, vacancies uh, except for fire and police. Further discussion will go to Bonnie Peterson. Thank you. Um, could I ask the attorney a question? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, Jason, um, are we allowed to put a moratorium on, hire, on hiring? Mr. Green? I think that's within the council's authority, yes. Okay. Because I um, it seemed like last time we met that there was discussion that we could defund, but only the, I thought that only the mayor could make, you know, the choices about hiring or not hiring. So, okay. So we, we are able to do that then. Um, I think what I would like to see, because I, I totally agree with Mr. Weifenbach that, it's a good way to look at resources and um, um, when job openings come available to see if how it could be done differently. And I would, uh, no matter the outcome of this vote, I would certainly encourage the mayor um, to do that and to explore other options. And um, so, thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Mayor, did you have a comment? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. President. There again, just to point out the facts. Uh, the 2011 proposed budget, we have 736.875 FTEs. The 2010 budget, we had 736.875 FTEs. There's no additional request for FTEs. The 2009, we had 131.875, and the difference was we end up hiring an additional eight police officers, and we reduced a couple of other additional FTEs. I appreciate uh, the comments as far as making sure that we actually go and look every time we do a rehire to make sure that it's appropriate to fill that position. I will tell you that we do that already. Quite honestly, we've, we've been holding the line on the number of FTEs in the city of Rapid City. It's something that we practice every single time. If there's a position that comes open, it's the first question we ask. Do we need to, do we need to fill that position? That's why you haven't seen uh, a growth in the last couple of years as far as the number of FTEs. We ask the question. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We'll go to Dave Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. I actually agree with Councilman Weifenbach. I think we have some absolutely outstanding managers in this city, and I think we need to give them the opportunity to manage. And I think the Mayor has pointed out that they have been doing that. They have been looking over their needs. They have been looking at the, 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 the entire package prior to refilling and hiring in the past and will continue to do so in the future. And with that in mind, I really don't see a need to put a moratorium on hiring that may in fact handcuff the city when in fact uh, there may be a department that needs to hire. I would rather that we left it in the hands of these managers that we trust to do their job the way that we hire them. Thank you, Dave. We'll go to Aaron Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, I appreciate the comments there from Dave Davis because it leads right into the question that I have, which is whether this falls under policy or under execution. So is this a decision that the council should make effectively perhaps handcuffing some departments or is this a policy that we should leave under uh, the mayor's 
supervision, which to this point he has said that he essentially follows that. Um, I think there could be arguments made to say it's policy. There could be valid arguments made to say it's execution. Um, I would like my fellow councilmen to perhaps weigh in on that if they have uh, an opinion. I yield. Thank you, Aaron. Further comments on the motion on the floor? Sam Quaker. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I do think that the, the number of FTEs that we have per department certainly is within the purview of the council. I mean, obviously we're hearing arguments why we shouldn't change this, but I believe that, it, you know, who's in those positions, that's an administrative determination with the exception of the, the certain positions that require confirmation of the council. But uh, counts by apartment department would certainly be within the uh, purview of the council. You know, perhaps one of the things that we could do is 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 end the practice of all of these uh, uh, conjury study adjustments that continually happen, um, all the way up to step D. They're not coming to the council for a public vote. They're just happening. We're finding out about them because we're being told per a resolution several years ago. Um, but you know, maybe that's one thing that we could do. I mean. Uh, looking more at competitiveness of, of the marketplace, looking more at, you know, whether there's ways to, um, to, uh, to cut costs and, and again, putting, putting uh, you know, putting people first. If you have a vacancy uh, open, for example, in a department that's seen a tremendous number of decline in the number of inspections that need to be done, you know, and then maybe that, that's something that could be uh, looked at. And the administration has the ability now, without a council mor moratorium, to do that. Um, if the administration is going to fight against a moratorium, um, it's going to make it. Uh, 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 I, I hope that doesn't mean that the administration is categorically against um, analyzing these positions when they come open, because you can look at the last couple of years and say, yes, we're at 736 employees. But if you look at the last five to eight years, you know. I remember a time when we were told we had 670, and was that in 05? When was that? I mean, we, what, what is our, um, what, what has been our growth? Um, uh, you know, clearly the city has grown in in the last 10 years, but what has been our our growth in FTEs? It certainly has grown uh, more than eight um, in the last. Um, six, seven, eight years, there's been a lot of growth. So maybe that there is some opportunity there. And um, I, I think that we should probably have those numbers. All we, I looked in the 2010 PDF here and the 2011 PDF, and I'm only seeing two years worth of FTE counts. And, uh, um, you know, if, if, if we can get those, uh, get those uh, counts, you know, that might uh, help uh, help us make a better decision on this uh, on this uh, uh, moratorium. So uh, I hate to ask for this again, but Ron, you may you might want to withdraw this one too uh, until next week, until we have until we have that information. Go ahead, Ron. That's fine with me. I'll withdraw the motion, and if, if my colleagues need more information, I'm fine with that. So I'll withdraw the motion. Okay, we'll withdraw that motion and we'll just put that on the agenda for next Tuesday or next Monday night um, after we get more information. And the information we're seeking is what the FTEs have been for the last 10 years, Sam. Is that where you want to? 10 years? Okay. Next item on. By department. The, pardon? It would need to be by department to make sense. By departments? Mm -hmm. Okay. Aaron Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm looking at my computer clock. It says 6:35. Um, I just ask, uh, perhaps you and the council, how we, we would like to proceed. There's still quite a number of items here uh, on on our paper. We have uh, item number two on our agenda, and we have a full council meeting following this. So, um, whether uh, we feel we're at a point now to uh, perhaps move, I guess we'd have to uh, move to continue this item. Um, to move on and discuss number two, or if we uh, wish to continue this, uh, this, I'm open to suggestions. Further comments? Actually, uh, I know uh, 
Alder Woman Hadcock had uh, discussed the next item on the agenda, and she's not here tonight. So let's go to item number two, which is discussion of the FTE request, the job description. Pardon? We have to vote to continue. Oh, okay. Uh, do we want – how many more items do we have that we're going to have to address uh, next Monday night? You, Tracy, what's your – flip that over once. Okay, so it was just the front page then? Is that what you're saying? And these. And the, okay, one, two, three, four, five other ones there. Okay. Okay. So uh, what we need actually then, Jason, would be a, a motion to continue uh, second reading, correct? And, but then we will not have any discussion on item number two. Is that all right. Okay, so uh, do you entertain a motion to continue uh, second reading of our uh, appropriation for 2011? We have a motion a second to continue uh, second reading until next Monday night uh, at 5.30. At 5? At 5. Okay. At 5 o'clock. Further discussion? Discussion on that motion, Aaron Costello. Um, perhaps I'd align with the motion, but I see we have a lot of audience members who uh, were here for items which we did not discuss. So I see a small group from the Civic Center. I thank you guys for sitting through this. And uh, I see a large group from the Dahl. Always a pleasure to see you guys here representing your fine institution. So thank you. Okay, further discussion on the motion to continue this to next Monday. Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Item number two on the agenda is discussion of the FTE request of job descriptions and reclassifications for the airport, the Civic Center, and the Police Department. Who wants to bring that forward? Airport, Cameron. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have a uh, very brief PowerPoint. I'd brought this uh, before the council uh, some time ago, and it was uh, the council at the time asked to uh, have this continue to uh, to these budget uh, hearings, um, and so uh, I'm bringing it back to the council. This is an FTE classification, and in the spirit of uh, the discussions that have been going on about uh, trying to uh, to streamline, uh, make uh, the departments more efficient, uh, that's what I bring before you today. Uh, this resolution, 2010-52, uh, um, uh, reclassifies two positions, and I'll go into more detail here in just a moment about what that does. But first of all, it conforms to FAA recommendations on the organizational structure of the airport. Uh, it does improve efficiency. It, it better utilizes existing FTEs, and I want to make that uh, abundantly clear that this does better use our existing FTEs. I'm not asking for uh, any additional FTEs. Uh, it reduces the management staff and it moves that management staff position down to a line worker position. Uh, and therefore, it reduces airport costs. Uh, my 2011 budget that I submitted to uh, the mayor that was approved by the airport board uh, reflects this change. Uh, before I go on, I also wanted to, to make note that uh, the, the airport is not in the general fund. I know that you're talking mostly about the general fund tonight. The airport is an enterprise fund, and as such, it's not uh, supported by the general fund. It is self-sustaining. Uh, so better use of existing FTEs. Currently, you can see uh, on your left, uh, we have five management positions, two administration, three maintenance, uh, three, I'm sorry, 13 maintenance and three oper uh, operations for a total of 23 FTEs. Proposed, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, reduce the management staff by one and move that position down into the operations and, uh, again, remaining at 23 total FTEs. This is uh, the current uh, org chart on the left. You can see this position here. the deputy director position, that is currently an unfilled position. What I want to do with this is 
uh, take that position, eliminate that position, and then distribute the responsibilities over here to the ops supervisor position and the maintenance supervisor position. You can see here in the proposed that that's what I'm doing. That uh, deputy director position is uh, eliminated from there, and then those responsibilities are then transferred to the three positions, deputy director for ops and security, facilities and maintenance, and finance and administration. This move uh, reduces costs. Our full-time salary and wages are reduced by about $23,236. That's year over year from the 2010 budget uh, that we have to the uh, 2011 budget that I have before you. Uh, our professional services are down. We're going to actually be able to do more work in-house, and so we're reducing our budget by $94,000, almost $95,000. And again, uh, the 2011 budget reflects that change. So. Uh, this resolution, again, conforms to FAA recommendations, better utilizes the existing FTEs we have. I'm not asking for any more. Reduces the management staff and increases our line workers, uh, reduces the airport costs, and I'm asking for your approval of this resolution for the reclassification, and I'll stand for questions. Any questions for Mr. Humphreys? We'll go to Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. I, Mr. Humphreys, appreciate you bringing this back at the budget time. I know that was, I mean, this is the time that we should be looking at these types of items. So appreciate that, and uh, uh, I guess I'll make the motion to approve it. Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't believe the item is actually on your agenda tonight, so what I would recommend that you do is direct that it be added to the next legal and finance agenda. We'll bring it through the normal process that way. My motion would be to move to the legal and finance. Okay, we have a motion and a second to take uh, the airport uh, request to legal and finance. Further discussion on that motion? Mr. Quaker. A quick question for Cameron. Cameron, the uh, can you put the map back up, the chart back up real quick? The operations supervisor's positions were at what pay grade and what pay grade will the deputy director, the three deputy director positions be? Uh, they're going to 21. Uh, they're at, uh, I want to say that they're 19. Let me bring it back up here. I actually have it in a different slide. And then the one deputy director position, that, would have been, that was at 23. So you're taking one that goes from 23 to 3 that go to 21. Right. As you can see up here, the current deputy director position is uh, a uh, grade 23. It's unfilled uh, at uh, when it was left unfilled, it was at step E, which was $62,000 a year. Uh, the finance and administration manager would not get a, uh, a change in the pay. It would stay at 49000 uh, operations supervisor and the maintenance supervisor would each go to the grade 21, which is 49,000 uh, for each one of those. However, it does result in a cost savings for the airport. So, when you would be out of office, who would be who would mind the store? I mean, who would which of those three? It would be whoever I tag. Uh, the, the whole idea behind this is instead of having one person that can step in for me, that I'll have three that I can develop into that. Uh, and it would be whoever is, uh, uh, is tagged for that week uh, to step into my position if necessary. Anything else, Sam? Further comments, Ron Weifbach. Thank you, Mr. President. I feel compelled to hear myself talk. This right here is a perfect example of why not filling a position gives people the opportunity to see or realize if that position is absolutely necessary. Looking at the org chart, looking at the savings, I mean, I, I don't, whether you believe in his philosophy or whatever you got to say, I mean, that position has been open for how long? Uh, almost two years. So, I mean, it, I, I go back to what I said earlier about looking at the opportunities. This, this position wasn't filled for two years. Previous to that, it was filled. I mean, there was another person in there. They, they chose not to hire anybody for that position, and they come back with a reorganization for that position with plenty of opportunity to, to uh, analyze what they're doing out there. So I guess I appreciate that, Cameron, and uh, 
you got something to say, obviously. If I could, Mr. President. Go ahead. Uh, I will say that uh, thank you for, for those words. Uh, th this has been a reorganization in the making for quite some time. Uh, it was a reorganization that I envisioned uh, when I took over. And, uh, and I wanted to streamline line it. And so I go back to, I'm, my apologies, I don't remember what Councilman said, it, of trusting your directors. Um, it, certainly in my best interest to try to make a, uh, a good budget that I can bring before this council and, uh, and reduce costs. That's in my interest uh, to make my department run. And, uh, and I'm sure that my other department directors feel the same way. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's our intent. That's certainly my intent. So thank you. Okay, the motion on the floor is to take this to legal finance. Further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, Mr. Maliski, we'll make this one short, correct? Thank you. We have asked, the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center has asked for the additional four FTEs for the 2011 uh, budget. This is an increase of four that results from increasing our facility, specifically adding an ice arena, adding the additional uh, events that go on with the ice arena and all the, all the different aspects of that. Uh, this does result in our budget for 2011 being up approximately four-tenths of 1% over 2010. And it is a result of all the additional uh, events that we are putting on and the additional facility that we have had uh, added to us. Okay, thank you. Go to Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll make the motion to move this to legal and finance. But I also want to take the opportunity to thank Mr. Maliski for bringing this forward and, and and if, if you've been to the Civic Center, you see that the people that are working there are, are very diligent. They're working very hard. They've, uh, the, the ice hockey has been a great success. Uh, so I, that's all i got to say. I don't get an opportunity very many times to say publicly that we appreciate your hard work over there, Brian and, and Jane and Sandy and everyone involved. So Thank you. All right. Okay, we have a motion to second. Take. I have my goggles on here. I can make it see better. Thank you. Ron Weifenbach, do that. We have a motion, a motion and a second to take this to legal and finance. Further discussion? Uh, Gary Brown. Further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Chief Allender, can you be short also? Thank you. Uh, well, I've presented uh, five job descriptions to you previously. I've provided you with material and a, even an email. And um, so rather than go through the whole thing, I, I think we're safe if I just uh, ask questions or answer your questions if you have any. I will remind you that uh, we don't have a resolution yet. I'll have that at a later date when, uh, when it's ready to be approved. There's no new FTEs here. And all five of these positions will not be added right away. We're going to work them into the, the, the uh, department uh, with uh, ongoing reorganizations in between now and 2011 sometime. Thank you, Chief. We'll go to Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think uh, Chief Allender gave a very good presentation at previous budget meetings, and I'll offer a motion to proceed with drafting the resolution and bring it to legal and finance. Okay, we have a motion and a second to take... Uh, the police department requests to legal and finance for the discussion. Ryan Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to take this opportunity again to thank Mr. the chief, and I would like to really send out a thank you to the guys on the street. Uh, they do a, a very tough job out there. Uh, every day when they go out and to, on duty, they face the opportunity of not coming back home that night and uh, understanding how the, the budget processes went for them isn't the greatest. And I appreciate them um, being so forthright and, in, in, and sucking it up and in no other words to say. Um, and we really appreciate it, or at least I do, and I know my constituents do, and I could probably speak for most of the council that uh, um, for them to, to go with a slightly zero or to no increase in, in, in the job that they do is amazing to me. Thank you. 
Okay, further discussion on the motion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Uh, with that, we have a motion and a second to adjourn, and we will have uh, next budget hearing meetings then will be on the 27th at 5 o'clock. With that, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries, we're adjourned.